Tonight I'll be reading Psalm 12, found on page 851. Help, Lord, for the godly are no more. The faithful have vanished from among men. Everyone who lies to his neighbor, their flattering lips speak with deception. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips and every boastful tongue that says we will triumph with our tongues. We own our lips, who is our master. Because of the oppression of the weak and the groaning of the needy, I will rise and say, Lord, I will arise. I will now arise, says the Lord. I will protect them from those who malign them. And the words of the Lord are flawless. Like silver refined in a furnace of clay, purified seven times, O Lord, you will keep us safe and protect us from such people forever. The wicked freely strut about when what is vile is honored among men. This is the word of the Lord. Here we go. We're going to use verse 6 and 7 for our call to worship here tonight. The word of the Lord is flawless. It's like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. You, Lord, will keep the needy safe. You will protect us forever. As we come under the Lord's protection here tonight, let's pray for his blessing to be on us in a time of silent prayer. Well, as is our tradition here on Sunday evenings, we read a psalm and then we sing the psalm. Uh, and Psalm 12, unfortunately, is one that I don't think that we give enough attention to, this beautiful psalm. And so there weren't many choices for it put to music here tonight. We're going to use our gray psalter hymnals because I couldn't find slides. And Danny, it's the same tune in both the Trinity psalter and the gray psalter. So use whichever you like. Uh, and we're going to be singing Psalm 12. It's a Genevan tune. Okay, and Genevan tunes are not tunes that we use very often either. They're, they're different from the other tunes. Uh, and you'll notice some of those differences as, as Danny starts to play. But even though we don't sing these Genevan tunes very often, we really, we really ought to pay more attention to them because this really is, is our heritage as Reformed people. We've been singing these Genevan tunes now for for 500 years, and, and uh, we don't sing them as much as what we really ought to to stay familiar with them. So because it's a little bit of a different way of singing, I put Pastor Lee on the spot, literally as he walked through the door here tonight, I said, Pastor Lee, you're way better at leading these kind of songs than what I am, and it's, we're going to need some confidence up here leading this song. So he's going to come up and lead us in singing Psalm 12 here tonight. Uh, we're going to sing uh, three verses of it, verses 1 four and five, and it's uh, actually, so there's not a fifth verse in this version of it, so we'll sing, we'll sing one, two, and four, one, two, and four, so stand with the music, and let's sing Psalm 12.
Well, thank you, Pastor Lee, for leading us in that. You could see that different rhythm that was going on in these Genevan Psalms there, couldn't you? Uh, well, let's confess what it is that we believe together as Christians. We're going through Article 5 here this evening of our confession, the authority of Scripture. Uh, and let's confess this together. We receive all these books and these only as holy and canonical for the regulating, founding, and establishing of our faith. And we believe without a doubt all things contained in them, not so much because the church receives and approves them as such, but above all because the Holy Spirit testifies in our hearts that they are from God and also because they prove themselves to be from God. For even the blind themselves are able to see that the things predicted in them do happen. And that's why this greeting that you get from God tonight, you can be so assured of it because the things in the Bible have happened and do happen. So people of God, know that your God greets you tonight saying, grace, mercy, and peace be yours. From God our Father, through Jesus Christ his Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We'll spend some time here in a congregational prayer tonight. One of those prayers that I should have mentioned this morning during our congregational prayer is, is sympathy for the Bausuma family. They uh, were able to go out, at least a couple of you were able to go out to California this past week for, for their uncle Art, it would be John's brother, uh, who passed away in Artesia, California. And so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, pray that the Lord helps you feel his grace, mercy, and peace in this time. The latest update from Vandekamps uh, is that, again, like really no change from this morning. Uh, every, every day, little Jaylee is moving forward. It's just very small steps forward. Uh, but but what, a, what a joy to, to know that she's moving forward, right, with all that she's been through in this past week. Uh, we're grateful for that. Uh, God's hand has certainly uh, been apparent there in Jaylee's life, and so we're grateful for that. Other items for prayer or praise tonight. Man, a quiet group. All right, well, we'll pray for God's blessing uh, in, in these aspects of our life that we need it so badly. Father in heaven, uh, we're grateful to be here again tonight in your house. Uh, Father, we've been concentrating today on the flawless nature of your word. We'll, we'll continue doing that here this evening, uh, and we thank you for that. There are so few things in this world that we can truly count on. Uh, everything else seems to fade away, Father. In fact, that's what your word tells us, that everything else will fade away, but we are so grateful for your word, which we can stand upon and which we can depend on, uh, and so we thank you for it. Father, we thank you for your word, especially in times of mourning and loss. And we uh, lift the Bausuma family up to you this evening, uh, having uh, or mourning the loss of uh, a brother-in-law and an uncle, Art, out in California. Uh, we're grateful that some of the family members could go out there for that uh, funeral service. Uh, we're grateful, Father, for the testimony of faith that he leaves behind and for the assurance that we have then that uh, he is with you. Uh, and we uh, celebrate that, Father, even as we mourn the loss and, and miss somebody now who, who won't be part of the family uh, anymore. And so be with the Bausamas as they, as they uh, mourn that loss. Father, we're grateful for your word in times of uncertainty, uh, as it's been for the Vandekamp family this past week with uh, the, the, uh, such a roller coaster of emotions that they've been on, first with their a uh, little baby being born and, and being born prematurely uh, and then having to be uh, flown off for uh, immediate heart surgery, Father, the, the ups and downs uh, of that for what it's been for her parents and grandparents and other family members uh, have been quite substantial in this past week, but through it all, they have been able to depend upon you. Uh, and the, the message of 
of peace that we, that we get from your word to, to be reminded that everything is in your hand, Father, that nothing happens that, that surprises you, nothing happens uh, that you were not expecting, nothing happens that you are not in control of. Uh, and so we thank you for keeping little Jay Lee in the palm of your hand here in this past week with everything that she's been through. We do thank you that she is improving, though albeit slowly, we pray that that improvement will continue Father, and that day by day she will get stronger and stronger uh, until she's able to come home and join her big sister and, and we're able to meet her. Father, we, we look forward to that and we pray that that day might come soon. Father, we pray for you to be with us in this coming week as we all go out now uh, to different jobs and different activities. Uh, for some of uh, us here, it will be going back to school. Uh, others of us will be going back to the office or back to the farm. Uh, others of us will be going back to other activities that keep us busy throughout the week. But no matter what that is, Father, we pray that all of these things would be done to your honor and glory, uh, that we would uh, remember this calling that you have given to us to repent, to change the way that we think, to follow you, to enter through the narrow gate, and then to do everything that we can, empowered by you and your Holy Spirit, to stay walking along that narrow road uh, until you call us home. Father, we pray for your blessing tonight as we continue to, to look at what it means uh, that the Bible is authoritative in our life and why that is, uh, and so we pray that you would help us understand that. All this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I guarantee you this song will be a lot easier to sing. Blessed Jesus at your word as we prepare ourselves to hear God's word. Let's stand with the music and we'll sing two verses of it. You may be seated and uh, take your Bibles out, open them up to 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to be looking at just one verse tonight that's out of the ordinary for us, but this is going to give us plenty to chew on uh, here this evening. I had, we read this verse this morning, uh, and I had told you that's the verse that you're going to see in the Bible reading plan tomorrow morning. I was a week off. It was the Bible verse that you saw this past Monday, uh, as part of our Bible reading plan tomorrow, uh, I believe you're going to be reading from Matthew. I get confused because we do them in advance, and I can't remember what gets published when. And, and uh, so this is the one that we looked at this past week. Uh, we're looking uh, these past couple of weeks at why it is that we treat this book differently than what we treat anything else. Uh, as we hear these words, we dig into these words, we study these words, we, we analyze them, we, we come to uh, conclusions that we call doctrines from them, uh, and we don't do that with other things that we read, do we? we uh, you know, sometimes we do analyze something a little bit more than another, but, but not to the extent that we do with Scripture. Uh, and, and so these past few Sunday evenings, we've been looking at why that is. What is it that makes these words so different than anything else? And we're going to read that here in this passage tonight. So second, or I'm sorry, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. We also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, 
which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. Let's pray that God will bless this short verse to us here this evening. Father in heaven, we do thank you for your word. We would be lost without it. Uh, Father, the more we understand about why these words in this book are authoritative, uh, the more influence they will have upon our life. So as we spend a few moments together this evening looking at why that is, I, I pray that you would help us to understand that and that you would help us to see the truth in this important verse that we've read together here tonight. All this we pray now in Jesus' name, amen. So these words are from God. They regulate and they establish our faith. Let's work our way through this verse here tonight. We thank God constantly for this, that when you received the word of God, okay, that word received right there is a key word to understand this passage that we have. It's in a very active tense. Uh, for those who are at home watching a football game right now, and for some of us who will be, go home and watch the second half when we're done here tonight, I almost can guarantee you that at some point in that game, they're going to come across a time where they've got to look at a guy in super slow motion, frame by frame. Did he receive the ball or did he not? Right? And then there's going to be all sorts of analysis. Did he get both feet on the field before uh, he went out? Uh, did, did he hold on to the ball when he went to the ground, or was it the ground that caused it to come out? We're going to look at that to the nth degree to see whether or not he received it. And the reason that that's important for you is because this is what you are called to do with God's Word as well. It's good for you to read it on your own. It's good for you, as we're going to talk about, we did a little bit this morning as well, to, to, to hear this word proclaimed. There's power in the proclamation of God's word. But all of that is lost if the ball hits you between the numbers and just bounces off your chest. If you don't receive it, that's the key factor in changing a person is receiving this word of God. And again, we look at this through the lens of God's sovereignty. Uh, it's not that we're able to receive this ball that comes to us in and of our own power. We're able to receive these words simply because God has helped us to recognize them as the truth. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, and because he's given us now the ability with a new heart and a new mind to receive these words as true. Right? So it's critical that you receive these words, not just hear them, not just read them. Uh, you, they have to become part of you, almost in the way that that ball is going to become part of the receiver as he catches that ball and hangs on to it for dear life. So we thank God constantly for this, that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, Right? We're not going to belabor this point too much tonight because we looked at this this morning, that there's importance in hearing this word proclaimed. Good for you to read it. You need to read it. It's good for you to memorize it. You need to memorize it. But it's absolutely critical for you to hear it. There's something about God's preached word. This is the way that he has ordained for his people to come to faith and for his people to grow in faith is to hear the word proclaimed. Uh, out of all of the ways that God could have done it, and, and think about this. This is the same God who spoke and galaxies came into existence. <laughs> He's got that kind of power. Uh, and so certainly he would have had the power to, <clears throat> to sort of beam this truth into our minds the way uh, that the... Uh, who is it, that, that uh, Spock on, on Star Trek, right? He could put his hand on the back of somebody's head and do this mind meld thing, right, on, on Star Trek, and, and the two minds would become one or something like that, and all the information would go to the other person's mind. I, I suppose God could have done something like that with us to where we're just going through life, and then the Holy Spirit hits us, and suddenly we have all of this new knowledge uh, and understanding. God could have done that. He didn't do that, though. 
He said, I want you to hear these words proclaimed. This is what's going to cause you to grow. This is what's going to cause you to change and, and, and turn away from the sin that you see all around us is hearing the word of God. So we receive this word that we heard. And then when we receive it, we accept it, right? Not just as the words of men. Now what we're saying here is that, that I mean, certainly there's been a lot of good literature written by men, right? And a lot of good literature that we really do need to dig into and understand and do that hard work of, of wrapping our heads around what has been written by those who have come before us. But the word of men is fallible, isn't it? As we look at poetry or literature or even history, we can, we can argue about the guy's point. Uh, is what he is saying valid or not? And this side of the group will say, yes, yes, it's valid. This is what we need to do. And this side of the group will say, no, 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 we don't think that this is right. Uh, and we have those arguments. And it's good to, to have those kind of arguments. But, but ultimately, we have to because... We understand that everybody around us is in the same sinful condition that we are. And, and so the, the, the ability for us to fully communicate ourselves, or, or communicate the truth, I, I should say, is, is vastly limited. No, what we're here tonight looking at is far different. This is the very word of God himself. We've gone over this a couple of times, too, over the past few weeks, so we don't need to jump on it too much. But we understand that even though all of these words that we read here were written by very different men, living in very different times, part of completely different cultures and languages, and, and, and that becomes evident as we read the way that they wrote these words out, we understand that these are not just the words of these men. No, these are God breathing through them. These are God's words, and that's why we take them as seriously as what it is. These are the words of God, and they are at work in us as believers. That's what we talked about this morning as well, that, that entering the narrow gate, as Jesus said, and continuing to walk down the narrow road uh, is, is doing what he told us to do. But if we were left on our own, we would make a beeline off of that narrow road and back onto the wide road as quickly as what we possibly could. That sinful nature is still inside of us, still wanting to tug us off of where Jesus called us to be. But this word of God continues to work in us. This is why it's critical for us to keep coming back week after week uh, because the devil and the world and, and our own sinful natures have